Psychic Pokemon have always been among my favorites. They tend to have really high special attack and special defense with decent speed, but their HP, defense, and attacking are certainly lacking. Sorry, that was lame. But you know what's not lame? Psychic Pokemon. So let's try to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Soul Silver using only Psychic type Pokemon. Just like my first Nuzlocke run, I named myself Boy because it's really condescending when people call me that. As soon as I leave my house, I'm assaulted by a vicious Meryl. This Poke world is really dangerous. And to find a creepy guy staring through the window trying to not act suspicious, but he's doing a really bad job. I go inside and Elm gives me a Cyndaquil, who I name Not Psychic. The C doesn't fit, but you get the idea. After getting my first Pokemon, I talk to my mom who thinks that I'm not smart enough to understand how a phone works. Then maybe don't send me off in a world full of monsters, you weirdo. And in Cherry Grove City, there is an old man waiting for me who wants to race. And I'm so slow, I can't even beat this old geezer. He feels bad for me and teaches me how to run. Apparently, you can just move your feet faster than walking? Who knew? I meet Professor Oak, who forces his unwanted phone number on me. I immediately call him, just for fun, and he tells me to look for Pokemon in grassy areas. Gee, thanks! On my way back home, I run into a passerby boy, who tries to take me down, but a few tackles is enough to take out his Totodile. And then he conveniently drops his trainer card for me to see. At Elm's lab, the very smart police think that I was the robber, just because I came back to the lab. What an effective police department the Poke World has. After my second rival, that nobody remembers, vouches for me, I'm cleared of suspicion and I use my psychic powers of deduction to tell them that this guy's name is Hylic, which according to Wikipedia is the ancient Greek opposite of psychic. Basically, loser. Now that I've laid down a false trail for the Popo, they leave me alone for now. My mom, who didn't even teach me how to run, by the way, then tries to scam me and steal my money. But I know better. I'm not giving her any of my cold hard cash. That's for me. Next, my unimportant rival shows up and tries to teach me how to catch Pokemon and does some weird dance in the grass with her Meryl. Don't really know what's going on there, but okay. Now I finally have Pokeballs. So I use my really strong psychic powers to attract an unknown. The first psychic Pokemon I would be able to catch normally, but now I can get him just a little bit early. I realize I should have healed my not psychic here, but that's okay. I catch him and name him Eintine because I forgot to put the S. Now, the thing about Unknown, if you're not familiar with them, is that the only move they can ever learn is Hidden Power. It's a 60 base power move whose type depends on your Pokemon's IVs or their stats, meaning that it's basically random. To find out what type you have for Hidden Power, you need to fight Pokemon. I find a Hoot Hoot, use Hidden Power, and it's not very effective. This kind of sucks. That means it's either grass or bug type, neither of which will work since the first gym leader has flying Pokemon. I try to kill the Hoot Hoot and get pretty close, but to no avail. Eintine is down, and that was attempt number one. I lost to a level three Hoot Hoot. For attempt number two, basically everything is the same, and I find another unknown. Run two has officially begun. I find another Hoot Hoot, and this time, Hidden Power can't even hit him. So it's either ground or ghost. Either way, run two has officially ended. That was a really fast and sad attempt. For run number three, I increase my psychic powers and turn Totodile into an unknown, so I get him a little bit faster. I don't really think this is cheating, considering I couldn't get unknown until after the first gym anyway, so any time before then is fair game in my opinion, and this will just make things go a lot faster. And this one does normal damage to Hoot Hoot, so run three has officially begun. The only change in this part of the run is the name of my rival. I get tired of insulting him in a way he doesn't understand, so I go for a third grade insult instead. Since butthead won't fit, I go with butt instead. And going through Bellsprout Tower, I find butt who just beat the elder. But, see what I did there? But let's be honest, the elder has like two bell sprouts, so beating him is not that impressive. I do it with one Pokemon. After beating the elder, I stay in the tower for a while to EV train against Ghastly's to boost my special attack. When I almost pass the level cap, I go to fight Falconer. My plan here is simple. Use hidden power and not die. Can we do it? He starts with Pidgey and I start with the only Pokemon I have. Einstein uses hidden power and it does a decent amount 
So after two hits, Pidgey goes down, and I have been sand attacked once. That could have been worse, I suppose. Then Pidgeotto comes out, hits me with a pretty strong gust as I miss my first hidden power. Things are already not looking great. And from then on, any time I damage him at all with hidden power, he just uses Roost to heal himself back up. I do get a critical hit at one point, but it's not enough for me to win. So attempt number three is over, just like that. On attempt number four, I do get another hidden power that does normal damage to flying type. So I give it another try. I get to Faulkner and things go okay for a while, but I still lose. I think this would be technically doable if I had really good RNG for this fight, but that is unlikely to happen. And so from now on, I will only go for runs where I have a super effective move against flying type. And after three more attempts, I finally get one. This is attempt number eight. While fighting butt, hidden power is super effective against Chikorita, so it looks like my hidden power is ice type. So that's pretty cool. I go back to Bellsprout Tower and EV train quite a bit more against Gastly's. I avoided as many traders as I could up to this point so I could be as low level and have as much time against Gastly's. And now I'm ready to face Faulkner. Einstein takes out Pidgey in one hit, so already things are going better. Now the obvious issue against Pidgeotto is that Roost will cause him to temporarily lose his flying type, which means that my ice hidden power only will occasionally be super effective. The other times it will do normal damage. So it does take a while, things get a little bit close, but eventually Pidgeotto goes down and I have defeated Faulkner. After many, many hours, I'm embarrassed to say quite how many, I have finally gotten the first batch. That was a really rough start. Now that I've beaten Faulkner, I backtrack a little bit to get the Twisted Spoon to power up my psychic type moves. It won't do anything now, but should be invaluable later on. Next, I travel south, pick up some items along the way, and head through Union Cave. With my Ice-type hidden power, it's actually really easy. I get to Azalea Town and see Team Rocket trying to shove some people around. Another member of Team Rocket is blocking the gym, so I can't get in. If only cops were out actually doing their job, instead of blaming me for crap, stuff like this probably wouldn't happen. Again, the cops in the poker world really suck. They seem to always rely on 10 year olds to do their dirty work for them. I go into the well and find the so-called scariest member of Team Rocket, who I take out easily enough, causing all of the other rockets to leave. In the Slowpoke well, I catch another Pokemon. Who do you think it's gonna be? If you guess Slowpoke, good job, you must also be psychic. I call her Newton because I didn't really realize she was a girl. Whoops. Before we go any farther into this run, if you've enjoyed the video so far, be sure to subscribe to the channel and maybe even share this video. Likes and comments are great too. Every little bit helps and I really appreciate all of it. Now back to the important stuff. After a bit of EV training and leveling, Newton is ready to fight Bugsy. I say Newton because Scyther can kill Einstein in one hit with his U-turn attack, so it's basically going to be up to Newton to win this entire fight. Scyther starts with a focus energy as I use Curse to boost my attack and defense. I'm not going to outspeed anyway, so I don't worry about the speed drop. And now Scyther starts using Leer to try and lower my defense back down, presumably to try and get a one-hit KO with U-Turn. So we take turns with Leer and Curse for a bit, all the while my attack is being boosted. I'll jump ahead to six Curses. I hit a pretty strong tackle, Scyther gets healed, and next responds with a quick attack, which doesn't do too much. After another tackle, Bugsy heals Scyther, but then a last one takes him out. With Scyther down, Bugsy sends out Metapod. And at this point, I'm not concerned at all, because Bugsy only has Metapod and Kakuna left, and I have a boosted Slowpoke. So a few tackles here and there, I took out Metapod, and then Kakuna. And now we have badge number two. This one was a lot faster than badge number one. And from here on out, the pace should increase quite a bit as I can catch new Pokemon, and I don't have to go through the very beginning of the game eight separate times. That was rough. On my way out of town, Buck comes out of nowhere and challenges me to a fight. Newton takes out his Ghastly in one hit, and then Bayleaf comes out, who poisons me while I do a pretty weak confusion. I decide to switch to Einstein because of his ice hidden power, as Bayleaf poisons him too. He gets Einstein with a few Razor Leafs as Bayleaf goes down. I could theoretically switch to Newton, but a Razor Leaf would hit her pretty hard, and so I'd much rather Einstein risk going down than lose Newton. But the poison is too much, and Einstein dies. Then Butt sends out Zubat, who makes me flinch, and then confuses me. This could very easily be a wipe. 
Fortunately, Newton hits Zubat through confusion and takes it out. This was way too close of a fight. I need to be far more careful from now on. So now we have the first death of the run. Goodbye, Einstein. You were at least useful for one gym, even though it took eight tries to finally beat that gym. I get through Ilax Forest easily enough, and then on my way to Goldenrod City, I find a Drowsy. Now in this route, I could have either had an Abra or a Drowsy, and I'm glad I got Drowsy instead because I prefer him right now. I catch him and name him Lorenz. My third wheel rival arrives once again and tries to introduce me to her grandparents. I didn't realize we were at that stage in our non-existent relationship yet. Her grandma does a little play on words with my name, maybe I underestimated this woman, and Lyra gives me her phone number in front of her grandma, which is a bit forward if you ask me. Before I can make it into Goldenrod, a police officer stops me. It looks like they're onto me once again. In Goldenrod, I try to get some coins playing Voltorb Flip, but it takes a while for me to remember how to play this game. It's basically Minesweeper, but not, if that helps anything. Either way, I need to play this quite a bit so I can get TMs like Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. I could also get an Abra with barely any coins at all, but there is a much better encounter I need in Goldenrod a bit later, so Abra will have to wait. I go into a flower shop, but this lady won't give me a squirt bottle until I prove I'm worthy by beating Whitney. Apparently, squirt bottles are dangerous weapons now or something. And that's all the incentive I need to try for another badge. But first, I'm forced to answer these pointless questions to get a radio for some reason. Against Whitney, I forgot to change Newton to the front, so I bring her out now. This was a bad start. Unfortunately, this will be the same basic strategy as last time. I'm gonna curse a ton and hope for the best. Her mill tank is just way too strong for me right now. At one point, Clefairy puts me to sleep and then starts mimicking my curses. She then hits a really strong signal beam and things are not looking great. My tackle doesn't do a ton since she also has boosted defense, but at least I'm getting some shell bell healing. A few tackles takes her out. Then Miltank comes out and immediately flinches me. But it looks like as long as she doesn't crit, I should be okay because of my defense boosts. And there it is. After a couple of tackles, Newton did it. I do need to point out here that I made a bit of a mistake in that there was a move tutor who could have taught me headbutt, which would have made this quite a bit easier because it's twice as powerful as tackle. After I beat Whitney, she cries like a baby and doesn't give me a badge. This is not very professional. Is there a complaint line for gym leaders? Now that I've been rightfully given what's mine, I've also proven myself worthy in the eyes of this overprotective flower shop owner, and I get a squirt bottle. How exciting. North of Goldenrod, I find an Abra who I immediately catch with a fastball and name him Tesla. I spend time headbutting trees in a national forest until eggs fall out. I catch them and name them Boar. In Ecrotique City, I think that's how you say the name, I find Bill in the Pokemon Center who then heads back to his parents' house in Goldenrod. So naturally, I follow him and pester him until he gives me an Eevee, who I name Schroeninger, because until he evolves, we don't know which evolution he'll be. I mean, yeah, we know he's gonna be Espeon because this is a psychic run, but I still thought it was a pretty good nickname. I give Schrodinger a haircut so he likes me more, and I let him pose for pictures. Isn't he just beautiful? After a bit more sucking up, he evolves into Espeon, who is actually my favorite non-legendary psychic Pokemon. And it's the entire reason I'm doing this psychic run in Johto, the region where Espeon was first introduced. And once again, though unfortunately not for the last time, I return to Bellsprout Tower to take out some ghosts and get special attack EVs. It's a good thing they're already dead, or what I'm doing would probably be considered a horrific massacre. I'm spending way too much time in this tower. It's at this point that I realize I haven't actually looked at my new Pokemon's natures. Schroeninger has an increased defense, but lowered special defense. So that's not great for him. But Tesla is adamant increasing his attack and lowering his special attack, which is the exact opposite of what you want from a Kadabra. So that kind of sucks. Anyway, after a bunch of EV training for my new Pokemon, I get back to Ecrotique City. But before I fight Morty, I beat up a dancing Team Rocket grunt. No getting footloose in my town. Turns out Morty is in the burn down tower, so I have to go there first. And Butt was waiting for me. But after giving Schrodinger a twisted spoon, but is basically a pushover. Bayleaf does survive a turn. 
a Magnemite paralyzes me, but Butt goes down without doing any damage to me. That was payback for killing Einstein. Then, after scaring off some legendary dogs and getting a weird fanboy, I go to fight Morty. And with my psychic Pokemon, actually just Schrodinger, this is a piece of pie. All of his Pokemon go down to a single confusion, and only a priority sucker punch by his second Haunter does anything to me. That was by far the easiest gym this run. We now have four badges. West of Ecritique City, I find a guy who is working on a Safari Zone here in Johto. I say I don't want to know about it, but he forces me to get his number, no matter how many times I say no. I honestly forgot about the Safari Zone here in Johto, but I'm not going to use it in this run, so I can stick with the more traditional Johto feel. I get to Olivine City and make my way up to the lighthouse to find a sick Pokemon that for some reason I am now responsible for. How exactly did that happen? Because I don't want this sick Pokemon to be on my conscience, I surf across the ocean to Cyanwood and without telling him any symptoms, the pharmacist gives me a secret potion that I guess heals everything. No wonder why this place has been in business for 500 years. I travel a bit north and find Suicune, who just stares at me and then runs off again. Okay, but then the fanboy comes out of nowhere and tries to fight me. Not gonna lie, I had no idea this was gonna happen, so I'm not prepared. Lorenz starts off with a headbutt as Drowsy puts him to sleep, and then does very little with confusion, so I'm not really worried here. Lorenz wakes up and takes him out. Next comes out Haunter, who puts him right back to sleep. I've gotten tired of this crap, so I'm switching to Schrodinger to take him out. Electrode screeches, meaning I need to change or else I'm gonna get hit pretty hard. So I switch to Boar, who gets Thunder. I don't know why Electrode did Screech if he then did Thunder, but whatever. Boar uses Leech Seed and puts him to sleep. How the tables have turned, and then takes him out. After I've beaten him, I go to the gym and I ruin Chuck's training session by turning off the waterfall. I know Schrodinger could sweep this guy no problem, but I wanna give Tesla a chance. He takes out the primate in one hit, so good for him, but Polyrath survives one side beam and hits with a really strong body slam. If he had killed or crit, that wouldn't be the end of the world because I don't really see myself use Tesla later on anyway. I'm just putting him here to see what happens. But it all works out when Polyrath goes down after another side beam. And with that, I can go back to the lighthouse and heal Ampharos. So finally, Jasmine will, you know, actually do her job and be in the gym. Jeesh. At this point though, I make a pretty big mistake. I accidentally use the level cap of Jasmine instead of Price, and I overlevel all of my Pokemon, meaning that I can't use any of them until I beat Price first. But it actually turned out okay, because now that I have Surf, and also Fly, there are a number of additional encounters I can get. Specifically, Natu, who I name Feynman, Girafferig, who I name Hawking, and Astaryu, who I thought I named Bernoulli, but I actually never did. So I really need to apologize for this breach of Nuzlocke rules and etiquette. But I will call him Bernoulli throughout this commentary. But to get Bernoulli to evolve, I need to get a Water Stone. And the most consistent way you can get that is in the Pokeathlon Dome. Back when I was a kid, I remembered enjoying these little minigames quite a bit because it's a nice break from the regular Pokemon grind. But at the moment, I'm just frustrated that it takes so long to get a Water Stone. And I kind of sucked the first few tries, to be honest. But eventually I get good enough, I get a Water Stone, and Bernoulli evolves. After some training, my new team is ready to fight Price. He leads with a seal, and Bernoulli takes him out with a single Thunderbolt. And then Pilloswine comes out and goes down to a single Surf. Last is Dugong, who does survive a Thunderbolt, and then heals with a Hyper Potion, and then heals with a full Restore. But he's just delaying the inevitable because one more Thunderbolt takes it out. Would you look at that? I didn't even need my old team for this one. Just Bernoulli, who was actually starving, but we call him Bernoulli. Anyway, I now have the sixth badge, and the level cap goes up by one whole level. Just enough to get my old Pokemon out of the box so I can fight Jasmine. One of the kind of cool things about her gym is that neither of the trainers here are going to fight me, because I single-handedly healed Ampharos for them. Something I guess neither of these people could have done, even though they've just been standing here in the gym, but that's okay. 
Against Jasmine, she brings out a Magnemite, and I start with Bernoulli. And no, this isn't a mistake, because a single Mystic Water-powered Surf takes out the Magnemite. She then sends out an almost identical Magnemite, who also goes down to a Surf. Then comes her ace, Steelix. Now Steelix has Sturdy, and can hit kind of hard, so I swap to Boar to try and make sure I don't lose Bernoulli. He's hit by a Sandstorm, and then Screech, but responds with a Leech Seed to break the Sturdy. I then swap back to Bernoulli to hit with a Surf, who takes him out. So I probably didn't need to swap in the first place, but I was just trying to be as careful as I could. That is badge number seven. We only have one more to go. But as soon as I leave the gym, Professor Elm calls me to complain about Team Rocket taking some people hostage. I'm not entirely sure why this is my problem, because again, I'm a literal child here, but to progress the story, I have to go to Goldenrod and take out some rockets. I can't get up the radio tower looking like a normal child, so I get a rocket costume that for some reason fits me, and as soon as I get it, everyone starts lecturing me about my bad decisions in life. What the heck? I also find out I'm not allowed to leave the city because rockets keep stopping me, and I can't even fly away. With my new costume though, I can trick the rocket member, but then Butt comes out of nowhere and actually tries to be a decent guy, insulting Team Rocket, until he takes my clothes off. That was a little bit weird which means that I have to beat up the Rocket member so I can move forward. Which begs the question, why couldn't I have just done that in the first place? Having the Rocket costume was kind of irrelevant here. In the radio tower, I find a locked door that only the director can open. So I need to go down in the underground and save him. When I get there, Butt wants to fight. I knew this was gonna happen, but I thought it was a little bit later on, to be honest. Anyway, against Golbat, Lorenz is immediately confused, then hits himself, gets hit by a really hard bite, and hits himself again. Not a great start. I swap to Schrodinger, who takes a bite, and responds with a Psybeam for the knockout. Haunter comes out, and suffers the same fate. For Sneasel, I send out Hawking, who gets icy winded, which drops his speed. Then hit by a really strong feint attack, and does a moderate stomp, so this time I change to Bernoulli, who takes about half damage to a faint attack, but does take out Sneasel with a Swift. Dark Pokemon are really not easy for my team. Meganium comes out, so I obviously have to swap, and I go for Boar, who takes a Petal Dance. Hit by another Petal Dance, and I go for a Leech Seed, because I'm an idiot. It doesn't work on Grass Pokemon. I knew that. I should have used Sleep Powder here, but go for Confusion instead. As Meganium gets confused, I swap back to Schrodinger as Meganium hits himself. One Psybeam takes him out. Last is a Magnemite, who goes down to a single Psybeam. That was certainly not the smoothest fight, but at least no one actually died, even though two Pokemon got pretty close. In the middle of this rescue operation, Tully, the fisherman, calls to tell me about his very important Quillfish. I don't really care though. The only reason I got his number is because he will occasionally give you a water stone, which he didn't do in this run. I get to the radio tower director who gives me a card key to open up the locked door. Shouldn't Team Rocket have taken this key away from this guy? They're not very good hostage takers, if you ask me. With the key, I make it all the way up to the observation deck and find Archer, the new temporary Rocket leader who's trying to bring Giovanni back. He leads with Houndour, who Bernoulli takes out with a single surf. Then comes out a stronger Hound Doom, who also goes down to a Surf. Bernoulli has the choice specs here to help out. Last is Coughing, who also goes down to a Surf. That was a really easy fight. After ruining his plans, Archer decides to give up on his dreams and dissolve Team Rocket. Again. With that out of the way, I make my way through Ice Path, where the ice puzzles got a bit difficult because of this weird glitch. This has actually been happening to me on and off since the very beginning of Attempt 1, because of the psychic powers I use to get unknown. But it goes away after a screen change, so I've just dealt with it. That's supposed to be Bernoulli behind me, by the way. Kinda looks like a girl. Anyway, I get through the ice puzzles and catch a Jinx, who I name Curie. I then go to Dark Cave, where I get a Wobbuffet, the last encounter of the run, who I name Galilee. I trade in the Red Gyarados scale, for an EXP share so I can level up Galilee, because he learns no real attacking moves. I go to the Slowpoke Well and EV train him so he gets lots and lots of HP EVs. 
Did you know that XShare actually shares the EVs too? I had to look it up just to be sure, but it does, and that was pretty cool. It means the EV training is not nearly as difficult as it might have been. So after a good amount of training, with Hawking going into the box, I go to fight Claire, who is apparently the world's best dragon type master, if you ignore Lance, that is. Bernoulli starts with a Thunderbolt, which is more than enough to take out the Gyarados. Next is Dragonair, but a critical hit Ice Beam takes it out. An identical Dragonair also goes down to a critical hit, but Bernoulli has never melt ice and would have one-shot them anyway even without the critical hits. But two in a row, pretty good luck. Kingdra is the one that I'm really concerned about, so I swap to Galilee for his first real battle, as he gets Smokescreen. Since Kingdra only has special attacking moves, I'm safe to spam Mirror Coat until he hits me. After another smoke screen, I do get hit with a Hydro Pump, but my Mirror Coat retaliates and takes out the Kingdra. Good job, Galilee. After I win, Claire is a huge sore loser and won't admit defeat. This is the second Johto Gym Leader to do something like this. What is in the water around here? It turns out the Dragon Master Challenge, which is a pretty cool name, actually just consists of some old guy asking me how much I love my Pokemon. Not much of a challenge, but okay. Obviously I pass, something Claire couldn't even do, and she finally gives me the 8th and last gym badge. After that, I go back home, and Elm gives me a Master Ball, and tells me about the Kimono Girls, who I've helped throughout this run that I don't think I've ever talked about. Then, Lyra friendzones me hardcore. I guess there is nothing there after all. At this point, I have to fight all of the Kimono Girls evolutions one after another without any time in between to heal. Not gonna lie, the Umbreon at the very beginning scared me a bit, but before that, I level up a bit more and finally get Newton to evolve. We start the fight, and I lead with Bernoulli, who hits Choice Specs Boosted Surf, is confused, hits itself, but then the Umbreon goes down without me taking too much damage. The next one sends out Espeon, who also goes down to a Surf, as does the next Flareon, obviously. For Jolteon, I need to change, so I switch to Boar, who does a Leech Seed as Jolteon double teams. Then I get paralyzed, I put Jolteon to sleep, he keeps getting paralyzed and Jolteon wakes up, and honestly at this point I'm just stalling because the Leech Seed is doing all my damage here, I'm doing very little. Eventually, Boar wins. That was a bit rough, and I should have given him a berry to heal his paralysis, but I didn't really care too much for it. Last, Vaporeon comes out and goes down to a Thunderbolt. If it weren't for Bernoulli, that would have been really rough. These girls have now deemed me worthy to go and catch Lugia. So, they do some dance to get him to show up in the Whirlpool Islands, and since he's a psychic Pokemon, I catch him with a Master Ball. I'm not going to use him, of course, because he's a legendary and he's way too strong, but it's nice to have a legendary Pokemon. It's also nice for people to tell me just how wonderful I truly am. Finally, my greatness has been appreciated. I make my way through Victory Road, where I encounter but one last time. Sneasel was really hard last time, but now I have Galilee, who counters a feint attack and takes out the Sneasel in one hit. Haunter comes out next and confuses me as I try to use Mirror Coat on a Shadow Ball. So I swap to Schrodinger, who gets mean looked, not too bad, then take out the Haunter with a Psybeam. Golbat comes out next, and one Psybeam takes him out, too. Then we have Meganium, who gave me a bit of trouble last time as well. A Psybeam does a good amount of damage as Meganium sets up Reflect, and then a second Psybeam takes it out. Magneton comes out next, and Psybeam does quite a bit of damage, especially for being not very effective. Schrodinger gets paralyzed, unfortunately, but takes out the Magneton anyway. Last, but has Kadabra, who disables my Psybeam, but since Schrodinger has choice specs, that's the only move I can actually use, meaning he uses Struggle next turn. That's kind of funny how that works, I had no idea this would happen. So I swap to Bernoulli, who gets hit with a very weak Psybeam, and responds with a Swift just for fun as Kadabra heals. Next turn, a Surf is enough to take him out. And so, for the last time, I have beaten Butt, who vows to come find me when he gets stronger. There are a few last minute things I need to do to get ready for the Elite Four. I finally use a Leaf Stone to evolve Boar at level 47. The reason I waited so long is because Execute learns Psychic at level 47, which just so happens to be the level cap. 
and none of my other Psychic Pokemon will actually learn Psychic because the level cap is simply too low. After changing a few moves and bringing Curie onto the team, I go to fight the Elite Four. Galilee does have experience share to try and get as high a level as possible for the Karen fight. And here is my team, all leveled up and ready to fight the Elite Four. We start the first fight against Will and his obviously lesser psychic type Pokemon. I mean, this guy has two Zatus. What's up with that? The first Zatu faces off against Schrodinger, but a choice spec Shadow Ball takes it out. And then the second, slightly more powerful Zatu suffers the same fate. As a matter of fact, every single one of his Pokemon goes down in one Shadow Ball. In the interest of time, I'm going to speed this fight up just a bit. And just like that, the first member of the Elite Four goes down without a fight. He should be embarrassed calling himself a Psychic Pokemon trainer. As a side note, Kyuri the Jinx would also have been strong enough to wipe his entire team, but I chose Schrodinger because I like him more. The next member of the Elite Four is the Poison Ninja Koga, and this fight will be much more interesting than the previous one. He leads with Ariados as Schrodinger stays in front. One Psybeam is all it takes to knock out Ariados. Next comes out Fortress, who can blow up on me and I really can't risk losing Schrodinger, so I swap to Newton. Fortress wastes time with a Protect, and then Newton outspeeds and hits him with a Flamethrower. This should do a good amount of damage, but he has Sturdy. It turns out he doesn't have Sturdy, so Flamethrower, which was four times effective, takes him down. That's alright with me. I thought he had Sturdy, but I'm not complaining. Muck comes out next, and while Schrodinger could easily take him out in one hit, a critical hit gunk shot would take out Schrodinger, so I can't risk it. Instead, I go for a Zen Headbutt as he uses Minimize, and my Zen Headbutt misses. He minimizes again, and I miss again. Then he goes for a gunk shot, which does do a good amount of damage, but finally I hit him and do even more damage. It takes him into the red as I heal with a Shell Bell, and he heals with Black Sludge. He then uses a full restore like a jerk, but I hit him again. He hits me with another gunk shot as I miss. Another hit does take me into the red, but Newton responds by killing Monk. That was pretty rough. With that, he sends out Crobat and I swap back to Schrodinger, who takes a really weak wing attack. Crobat outspeeds with a double team, but it doesn't matter because one Psybeam takes it out. Venomoth is his last Pokemon, and it also goes down to a single Psybeam. I told you this was going to be more interesting, didn't I? The muck would have been a piece of cake if I didn't have to swap out Schrodinger because of the fortress. But that made me mix it up a little bit, so I guess it's more entertaining for you. Next we have Bruno, who has only very slightly changed his team from the first generation. Why he doesn't have a Steelix yet is beyond me, because Onyx really sucks. Like, I cannot overstate quite how much Onyx sucks. Anyway, this fight is basically the same as the Will fight. Schrodinger comes out, and with Choice Specs boosted Psybeams, one-shots his entire team. So again, I'll speed this up to go pretty quickly. I did actually anticipate Onyx to have Sturdy, but that wasn't a thing. I don't know why the guy keeps saying all of these Pokemon have Sturdy, because apparently they don't, but it doesn't really matter. I won. He was easy. Karen, however, who is the last member of the Elite Four, is going to be rough. She seems to have replaced Agatha, who finally joined her Ghost-type Pokemon. You know, because Agatha was so old that she died. Anyway, Karen is certainly the most concerning because she has Dark Pokemon, a perfect counter to basically my entire team. She leads with Umbreon as I leave with Galilee. Umbreon only knows physical attacking moves, so I can respond with counter. I do use a safeguard just in case I get confused, even though I also have a Person Berry, so it doesn't really matter too much. However, Umbreon goes a different route and chooses to use Double Team six times in a row. Yikes. So I'll skip ahead a bit because I can't do anything here. Eventually, Galilee gets hit with a Faint Attack, which does a lot less than I anticipated, to be honest, as Galilee responds and does more than half of the counter. The next counter misses, but Faint Attack isn't doing too much damage. The third counter does connect, and Umbreon goes down. From here, I expect a pretty smooth fight. Gengar comes out, and I bring out Newton, who avoids two Focus Blasts in a row, good for him, and responds with a one-hit KO Zen Headbutt. Vileplume comes out next, and I bring out Schrodinger, who avoids a Stun Spore. 
Though I did have a cherry berry just in case because I knew he was going to try to stun spore me. One Psybeam then takes it out. Murkrow comes out next and I bring out Bernoulli, who I just realized this is the first time he's come out in the entire Elite Four. That's pretty crazy. Bernoulli has choice specs, so I have to use Surf because next is a Houndoom. But Surf is more than enough to take out the Murkrow. Last is her Houndoom, who also goes down to a Surf. That fight actually went pretty well. It could have gone a completely different direction if Galilee hadn't been a champion and taken out her six-time double-teamed Umbreon. That would have really wrecked my entire team. Now, for the last fight, we go up against Lance, who is the new champion. Even though his Pokemon are like 10 levels lower in this generation than they were in Fire Red, but whatever. Just like then, he starts with Gyarados, who Bernoulli takes out with a single Thunderbolt. No surprise there. It was crit, but that obviously wasn't necessary. Next, he sends out a Dragonite. Here, I really need to think about my next move. I don't think Bernoulli can take him out even with a Nevermelt Ice, and this Dragonite has Thunder. But I actually anticipate a Thunder Wave instead of Thunder, which I could actually just heal because of Bernoulli's Natural Cure ability. So I take a risk, go for Ice Beam, and the Dragonite actually dies. Now I knew that was a possibility, but it was actually more likely that he survived according to the calculations. That was pretty lucky. The next Dragonite comes out, he doesn't have Thunder, so it's not really risky at all. I go for an Ice Beam, and he also goes down. This is going much better than I anticipated. But then comes out the Aerodactyl, and I need Bernoulli healthy for the last two Pokemon. So I bring in Newton, who gets hit hard by a Crunch. Another Crunch almost takes me out, but Bernoulli responds with a Surf. At this point, since Aerodactyl's in the red, I anticipate a heal. So I swap for Galilee, and he does heal, which means I got a free swap. Galilee takes a really strong Crunch, and you guessed it, responds with a counter for the knockout. I cannot overstate how much I love Galilee right now. His Charizard comes out next, and I'm confident Bernoulli can take a few hits, so I bring it back out. A super effective Shadow Claw does about one third of my health, and my Surf leaves him with like one HP. Literally, what is going on here? That should have just killed him. Bernoulli tanks another Shadow Claw, and things are getting a little bit risky. He heals, but the next Surf is actually a high roll, and it takes him out. So that turned out okay. His last Dragonite comes out, so I go for an Ice Beam. He is one level higher than the two previous Dragonites, which is just strong enough for him to survive. He heals with a Citrus Berry and takes out Bernoulli with an Outrage. I was so close to finishing the run without losing anyone important. Not talking about you, Einstein, sorry. But I didn't quite make it. That is certainly a disappointment, but now I effectively have the run in the bag. Since he's weakened, I bring out Schrodinger, who finishes the run with one last Psybeam. Just like in the previous game, Oak then arrives too late, after the battle has already been won. Lance takes me and my team to the Hall of Fame, and the run is over. Before this run, I had barely ever used Starmie or Wobbuffet, but now I really like them. The MVP of this run was probably either Schrodinger or Bernoulli, but Galilee was still a really useful Pokemon for the odd ones here and there that those two couldn't quite take out. I know technically there is still the entire Kanto region with more encounters and more gym leaders, but this video is already way longer than I had anticipated, so I'm calling it right here. If there is enough interest, and some of you actually watch to the very end where I'm talking about this, I could do a part two where I take my team, minus Bernoulli, unfortunately, and go through Kanto as well. So let me know in the comment section if that's something you're interested in. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and be sure to check back in a couple of weeks for another video, this time a challenge run of Pokemon Ruby.